link that <laughs> uh, with my next guest. I'm trying, I'm, ra- I'm racking my brains, but I think I'm going to give up uh, and just say very warm welcome, of course, um, to you both, Laura Wolford and Anna Hunter, mother and daughter team uh, behind a gallery that was in that is in Belgravia. We were in Belgravia and in Mayfair for many years, and now we're in Surrey. What's it like working with your mother? It's amazing. I never planned it at all. And it was actually a family tragedy that led to it. And it was one of those lessons in life that through adversity and and terrible things, wonderful things can happen. And we've had the most amazing career working together for the last, what, 23 years. Yes, I think I started it. 38 years ago or something like that and and you've been on board for about 25 of those. And my first business trip was um, with Anna to South Africa to meet Nelson Mandela and to watch him sign his work, his artwork. He'd created um, a series of artworks based on his time on Robben Island and so we flew out to South Africa when I was about 22 and so many years ago and I was asked, um, we were given, we were upgraded and I was just absolutely excited, forget meeting Nelson Mandela I was so excited to be get upgraded on Virgin. Um, and then we arrived in um, South Africa in Johannesburg and spent a morning with Nelson Mandela and launched his artwork um, in our gallery in London. And interestingly, he asked me if I'd like a cup of coffee and he asked Laura if she'd like a milkshake because <laughs> he thought she looked so young. And then um, Laura, <laughs> Laura, Laura, Laura said to him, um, Mr. Mandel, do you mind if we film um, uh, you signing these um, pieces? Because I've borrowed my a camcorder from my brother. And in the room was um, his lawyer and, uh, and his art publisher. And um, a Mandela said, looked at his lawyer and they thought it was fine because they thought Laura was so young it wouldn't but it's been the most useful um, piece of um, uh, our gallery's archive really that is extraordinary what a first business trip I don't think many people could say that and he offered me one of his grandsons if I doubled my weight he said he'd offer me one of his grandsons in the marriage and I, I turned him down so he offered you a milkshake and one of his grandsons. Yes. yes. Fascinating. So what was it then that took you out of, of London and, and to Surrey? Uh, well, we'd, we'd had a gallery in London for many years and we'd had an amazing time, but rents were rising, rates were rising, and the way people shop was changing. You know, people were um, starting to buy a lot more online. And also having a shop in London is a lifestyle. You've, you've got to want to be there every day, opening it up. And so we um, made the decision to move out to... Um, sorry and now we do a lot more of going to people's homes and it's interesting talking to all of you hearing all of of you talking about creativity we we take creativity and we almost take it into people's homes you know we will help people that have just moved to fill their homes with beautiful art and to and some people don't know where to begin they have art from their previous home and they don't know what to do with it. it they think it doesn't go but actually you can reframe it and it can be completely transformed so we spend a lot of time now with a professional art installer and we go into people's homes and we help them to um, to really make their house into a home. So it's it's very different to people coming to see you in a shop. It's now us going to see people in their homes and they come to see us in our homes as well. So we show art there, um, which is, is really lovely. And it's, it's much easier for people to visualise what something might look like in their home when they come to my home and see it above a sofa or in a kitchen or in a dining room. And what sorts of, apart from Nelson Mandela's signed pieces, what sorts of, or what latest, newest art do you have? Well, I mean, just going back, um, I started with um, Royal Academicians um, and uh, got to meet some quite well-known people. And then as a result of that, um, I approached um, Prince Charles as he was and uh, worked uh, with him for, I don't know, 13 years uh, on his art. And we raised uh, four or five million pounds for his charities. And we raised a lot for Nelson Mandela's as well. Um, and then uh, Charlie Mackesy was another oh. of ours that we launched from, um, the, you know, I think his, the beginning of his career. Um, so before the boy, long before, before the book. Long, long before, before. Long yeah. be- decades before. His yes. art. Yes, yes. Yes. He does all sorts of different things, yeah. jazz scenes and beautiful watercolours, yes. bronzes. Yes. And then we do emerging artists. So we've got local artists we work with. 
um, and pop artists and um, all sorts of sculpture. John, uh, well, John Unsley, he's, he's one of our favourite. He's um, the lead guitar, yeah. guitarist of I've Dark, interviewed him. Uh, yeah. And he, um, he's a really good painter mm. as well That's and uh, we sell his work. and yeah. Yeah. So it's a whole mix. It's yeah. a real eclectic mix and it's what our, our, really our, um, our thing is what we would love to have in our own homes. And it doesn't need to be one particular subject or style. Um, and, and we really encourage sculpture. We think sculpture is really overlooked in the UK. I think sculpture is really overlooked in, in UK homes and collectors. And it can add such an, an amazing dimension to an interior or an exterior. Um, I have to ask you, because uh, last week I had on the show Katie Hessel, um, who is has written The Story of Art Without Men, uh, highlighting how difficult it still is for female artists to to have be in exhibitions to have their voices heard she's sort of making it her mission because Gombrich in his book the story of art actually had not one woman mm. uh, I wonder if that's something you're obviously a an all-women team um but do you think that's still a problem from your perspective we've always championed female yes, artists we we've actually like half. even without um, necessarily intending to, we've gravitated towards female artists a lot. We've worked with a lot of Greek artists, many of whom are female. Um, so from our perspective, no, but I can see that in the industry as a whole, it's there's still a gender inequality, I'm sure. Do you think it's changed? Since uh, it's, it's changed enormously. And um, Louise Bourgeois is, is one that um, uh, I can think of who whose work has just um, gone up so exponentially. Um, and um, I, I think rather like... Um, you know, we don't notice what colour people are, what you know, what race, what um, gender they are. We we are, are looking at them from what they produce and um, uh, its marketability um, and um, its beauty. Mm. A message says, "Times, please give the name of this gallery." Did I not do that? Belgravia Gallery. <laughs> Belgravia. Belgravia Gallery, which is now in. Um, Cranley in Surrey, which is known as Britain's bit biggest village. Britain's <laughs> biggest village. Uh, I'm going to just, I'd 